Hello, this is Mike Lively, and we are looking at something that's near and dear to my heart today, Flash Builder. We're starting that series, going to show you how to use Flash Builder, and this is a getting started part. Now, we're going to do something a little different here. I have a, the video outline right here, and below I have a series of demos that you can actually download and work through to help you come up to speed with Flash Builder. I'm actually going to go through these demos and point out what I consider to be very important in using Flash Builder, some of the tricks and uh, some of the things you can use actually to come up to speed uh, with this new technology. Uh, you can get all these uh, demos from my Google Code. That's flex3cookbook3.googlecode.com files flash builder demos part one dot zip. And uh, a few references here. Le flex in a week is there if you're not used to flash builder and you want to get used to flex interface. You can look at that flex in a week and also lynda.com which has a number of great tutorials. But uh, you're going to get more here, more than you get on Linda, more than you get on Flex in a Week. And, uh, and so for me, it's a very exciting series. Let's go ahead and get started. So what you want to do is go to uh, labs.adobe.com, Technologies Flash Builder 4. And on that site, you'll come to the download page for the new Flash Builder. And I'm excited because Flash Builder Beta 2 has finally been released, and I'm actually downloading it today and putting it in both Eclipse and Standalone. So once you click on Download uh, Flash Builder 4, it'll take you to this uh, download page. And you scroll down, you'll find four different versions you can download. You can download a Mac version and a Windows version, but you can download a standalone version and a plugin for Eclipse, and I actually use both. And Eclipse is a wonderful uh, tool. If you haven't used it before, you should investigate using it. Of course, if you download the Windows installer, that will give you Eclipse, Flash Builder, and the Flex 4 SDK, all as a standalone package. And if you download the Flash Builder plugin, you'll have to have Eclipse, and then you'll download that into your Eclipse. But actually, you can see that the Flash Builder plugin is actually larger than the Flash Builder 4 standalone. And the Flash Builder plugin actually has Eclipse in it, so you have the option of choosing their Eclipse or the one that you have presently on your uh, system. So once you've downloaded that, just go through typical install for an Adobe Flash product, and it'll install, and then you can bring up Adobe Flash. So one, we're talking about getting started, and two, we've showed you how to download it and just install like you typically do a uh, Flex project. And just a note about the install, make sure you shut down all your browsers as you install. And when you start it up, uh, you have two ways to do that. You actually get an icon in the startup menu, or you can actually go to where it was installed and click on the gumbo executable. And I spelled gumbo wrong here. Let me correct that. So I've done that, and I'm actually in a Flash Builder right now. And if you're familiar with Flex, uh, this environment is very similar. But don't make the mistake of thinking Flex and Flash Builder are the same, and it's just a small upgrade. There is a huge difference between Flex 3 and Flash Builder 4. And basically that centers around the new components called Spark. And if you look at the different uh, perspectives here, you get Flash, Flash Debug, and Flash Profile. And we'll be using Flash and Flash Debug quite a bit. And uh, let's move back to our notes. You have this new Package Explorer. And let's look at that real quick. So here, as opposed to the old uh, Flex with Flash Builder, you get this little you get this package explorer, and it's actually extremely useful. It's got some nice features. It actually allows you to go down and look at the content of your Swift files as well. Pretty cool. And what I like to do is come along and just create a new project and just show you how that goes. So hit New, Flex Project, just like you would do in Flex. And you put the name of your project in here. We'll put Test 1. And you have a few options here. You can actually go with the web or air, just like before. You have the new option here, however, of just specifically choosing the SDK. Since Flex is changing very rapidly, and since they are adding new SDKs every day, if you want to uh, basically download from the open source site and, and try the newest SDK, you could do that, and you can select that particular SDK whenever you want to. So that's a lot of flexibility. This used to be really hard to do. I used to have to go into the projects menu and change this, and now you just do this directly right on the panel. So that's pretty cool. So once you've done that, you can hit Next. And this is pretty typical. All this stuff is going to go into the output folder of bin debug. Hit next. Here's your source path, which has always typically been your SRC folder. And once again, it is the SRC folder. Let me bring that down so you can see. There's your SRC folder right there. That's where it's all going to go. You want to keep that as your SRC folder. And then you're finished, and you create a project. And there's my new project right there, test one. And there's something extremely important I want to show you. I'm going to go right to uh, the source view. So we're in Flash Builder, we're going to go to the source view, and boy, here's the big change. S. What is that S? That means Spark. 
and that is the new component, the new namespace in Adobe. Also, you get three namespaces with this. You get a FX namespace, which basically it has to do with the coding that wraps your components. You get an S for your Spark, and you get an MX for your uh, uh, old Flex components. So basically, there's two types of components you'll be using, graphical components, and that'll be Spark containers and uh, MX, or what's called now Halo containers. Now, why is that? Why do you have two types of containers? You're actually mixing containers. First time that's been done in Flash Builder. Why? And that's because basically they haven't built all the other containers yet. So eventually, we, I would expect Halo to go away and everything to be in Spark. Now, what is the big deal about Spark? Basically, Spark separates your graphics from your code. And they're getting all set up for mobile devices, to be honest. And this just rocks. And I'm going to show you feature after feature, which is going to blow you away. And you really got to hand it to Adobe. They have done a super job. Hey, let's run and take a look at one of the demos, and uh, we'll conclude this video. So I'm in Adobe Flash Builder right now, and I'm going to take a look at my demo. So you download this from the zip file on the web on my Google Code. And I actually have a few notes here. If you want to click on those, you can actually open those up with the system editor. And when you do that, it actually brings that up in Word, and you can actually go through the little demos here. shows you where to download it. Of course, you already got that, and some of the things I said in the video. Uh, then you want to go back to the Flash Builder again. So what I want you to do is click on Demo 3, and uh, it's very simple. All this is basically is what I call a panel writer. And you have one text box here and one text box here. And when you hit Transfer, it just takes the information from text box 1 and transfers to hex box 2. But let me show you what the big deal is here. So let's go back to Source Design and uh, bring this up a little bit so you can see it. And you see your basically your, your XML decoration and you have your uh, Spark application tag and then you have your FX script tag. Now once again that FX name container containing stuff that aren't specific to components. You want to wrap those basically kind of wrap those into your components using that FX tag and there's a lot of cool stuff with FX. There's something called FX decorations that we'll get into. But here I just basically have a, a simple line of code that says when I click on this function, transfer text, so I simply take the text from text box 1 and I add it to text box 2. Very simple line of code. Let's go down to our button container. Now, if you can't find the button container in your uh, script, I, I'm always going back to design and I click on that and I go back to source and it will highlight where I am. Now for a short code that you don't have to do that but when your code gets really long and complex you definitely want to use these shortcut techniques of get moving around. And right here you see basically the, the uh, transfer text that you click on. This basically just function. Now if you hit the control key and roll over that it will highlight, click on that and allow it to take you to the method that it, it executes. But once again there's another way to do this when you code it. I'm going to take away this line of code right here. And I'm going to click here, and I'm going to get this, oh, click interactive. I like that, so I hit return. But look what it did here. Click, or generate, click handler. Let's click on that and see what happens. Woohoo! It automatically generated that line of code for me. Isn't that amazing? It put the code stuff in for me. So I'm just going to take this line of code right here. I'm going to copy it. And I'm just going to paste it right here. So what Adobe has done, it now has automatic code generation. Woohoo! <laughs> this is wonderful. Okay, so I don't need that anymore. I've got this automatic tag in here. So you see in my button, it generated that code for me. Click on it, and there it is. Let's run the program again. So let's now run this program. Click on the Run button, just like you would in Flex 3. And we're going to run this program, and here it is. And there's my text box. Whenever I click on it, it transfers the text. Let's type something else here. Text uh, moves. And pretty much, excuse me, text moves, click on that, and it moves to the lower box. Hey, not a very interesting program, but the way I generated that code automatically is going to save you hours of time in the future. you got to hand it to Adobe. That's wonderful. Just one more cool feature, and that's a rollover documentation. Look, I rolled over that. Something happened. That's right. The doc about what that function does, what that method does, appeared. Look at that panel. Roll over that. Everything about the panel that you want to know. This is going to accelerate your ability to code because every once in a while you're going to be looking for a function and as opposed to running back to documentation all right digging through the docs it's all going to be here right in front of you and you can figure out what that component does on the screen very rapidly just by rolling over it and reading about what it does right here the documentation comes right in front of your face I find this extremely useful 
especially when you have technology like this that's brand new. Hey, we're just getting started. This is an exciting series for me. Uh, stay tuned. We've got a lot more to come.